This video is on intermolecular forces. So before we can get to that, though, we need to understand what a dipole is. A dipole is when you have opposite charges that are separated by a short distance. All right, so if I draw a water molecule here, okay, and I'm going to draw two, actually. Um, we've talked about this a little bit with the charge, how the, um, the charge with the electrons and how they shift. So... Oxygen is more electronegative, so it pulls electrons more, and they shift towards oxygen. So this is the dipole right here, all right? So another way to write that is oxygen will become more negative, hydrogen will become more positive, so these are these little partial, all right? So the shift, oxygen is more negative, hydrogen ends up being a more positive side. So then intramolecular forces are forces that are within molecules. So then when we've been talking about bonds, like covalent and ionic bonds, that is an intramolecular force. So that is this right here, the oxygen-hydrogen bond. Intermolecular forces, now this new piece, is the ones that are between molecules. So that means if I have another water molecule that I might draw right here, there's an attraction between it and another water molecule. And the reason there's an attraction is because, if I, if I draw this, right, oxygen's more negative, hydrogen's more positive, because we get this charge difference, and you have an attraction from the negative oxygen to the positive hydrogen. And this right here, this attraction, is what we call the intermolecular force. So intramolecular forces are stronger than intermolecular forces. What that means is, is that I will pull two water mo molecules like away from each other. That's easier to do than it is to actually separate the hydrogen and the oxygen. All right, so there are three different types of intermolecular forces. And another name for them is van der Waals forces. So van der Waals forces is a collective name for the attractive forces between molecules. All right, so the first one is what we call a London dispersion force. So London dispersion forces are due to the constant motion of electrons in noble gases and nonpolar molecules. Okay, and nonpolar right here is the key which causes what we call a temporary dipole moment. So this is a really weak bond. Because when you have nonpolar things, like let's say you have like a hydrogen bonded to a hydrogen, they're equal. Like one isn't pulling more of the electrons than the other. However, what happens is the electrons are shifting back and forth between them. And when they shift towards one way, like when they shift this way, this one becomes more negative and this one becomes more positive. But then, when they go back and shift this way, this one becomes more negative, and this one more positive. So the shifting back and forth is what we call a temporary dipole. So it's really weak. All right? So this um, exists between all atoms and molecules. So every single one always has London dispersion, but it could also have stronger ones. So um, a property you should know is that larger, heavier atoms exist stronger forces. So if you have a heavier, like if I look at the uh, halogens, for example, fluorine and chlorine on there on the top, and then going down is bromine, and then down again is iodine. So iodine is the heaviest, which means your molecules are closer together. So I'm going to make a little note here. I'm going to write heaviest, so most dense, right? And your molecules are closest together. So what that does is that makes iodine a solid at room temperature. Because if I go back up to here, to in, these intramolecular forces are stronger than intermolecular forces. When you break these, breaking them or forming them is a phase change. That's like a solid to a liquid. That's what I mean by phase change, liquid to gas. All right, so if iodine's a solid, it's the heaviest because they're most dense, they're tightly packed. Bromine is less, weighs less. 
It's less dense, okay? The molecules aren't going to be as close, which is why bromine is a liquid at room temperature. Fluorine and chlorine are lighter still, and they're going to be even less dense and more spread out, which is why they are gases. All right, so that's the weakest. The second type that's stronger is what we call a dipole-dipole attraction. So this is the attraction of the positive end of one polar molecule, and that's the key is polar, to the negative end of another polar molecule. So if you have, let's say, HBr, this would be polar, all right, and your bromine would be more negative, right? They're going to shift this way. This part is going to be attracted to, kind of like I was talking about in the beginning, the hydrogen end of another HBr molecule because, oops, because the hydrogen is more positive or slightly positive is a better way to say it. Right, you've got your same shift here, right? So the negative from the bromine here is attracted to the positive of the hydrogen. So properties in this are that dipole, uh, dipole interactions are stronger between positive and negative charges. which makes them more likely to form solids. So you're going to get more solids here with these polar molecules. All right, the last one is hydrogen bonding. Now I know it has bonding in the term, but we're not talking about actual bonds like ionic and covalent. This is a very special dipole-dipole that occurs when you have hydrogen bonded to, like I literally mean hydrogen connected to, like hydrogen and then line to, um, any of these three, nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. So sometimes I hear kids talk about this as NOF. Nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So hydrogen is really low electronegativity and nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine are really high. So you get just a stronger separation, a bigger difference. So it forms because of a large difference in electronegativity Um, hydrogen gains a partial, I'm going to write, I'm going to change this, a large partial positive charge. And the other element, so the nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, gains a large partial negative charge. All right, so then properties is that at a constant temperature, they require very large amounts of energy to break the bonds. So these are going to take a lot of energy to change their phase or their state. It's going to take a lot to get these things to go from a solid to a liquid, for example. All right, so let's kind of summarize and kind of overview them. Okay, so London dispersion is the weakest. And hydrogen bonding is the strongest, right? So that would put your dipole-dipole in the middle. So weakest to strongest. So boiling point then, boiling point is the temperature when your liquid turns into a gas. So the higher that temperature, the more energy or heat you have to put into it. So the higher the temperature is going to be more energy. So that would be your strongest one. This would have the highest boiling point because it's going to take the most energy. It's the strongest. This one's the weakest, London dispersion, though, so that's going to have the lowest. And then dipole-dipole would obviously be in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to make a little note here, because this takes more energy to go from liquid to gas. All right, so as strength increases, boiling point increases. All right, so let's go through a couple examples. So what is the predominant intermolecular force in each molecule? What do I mean by predominant is which is the strongest? For example, if something has hydrogen bonding, it also has dipole-dipole, it also has London dispersion. If something has dipole-dipole, it also has London dispersion. So they always have the weaker ones, but which one is the strongest? 
So the way to figure this out is this. You have to look at these and say London dispersion is going to be any molecule that's nonpolar. Dipole dipole is going to be any molecule that's polar. And hydrogen bonding is going to be any molecule that's polar with H bonded to N, O, or F. So we're going to have to draw these. So if I draw out NH3, nitrogen has five valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one, so I'm going to bond a hydrogen on each site here on the nitrogen. So this would be trigonal pyramidal because of that lone pair, which makes it polar. Now, do I have hydrogen bonding? Well, I have hydrogen bonded to N, right? N or F. So this is polar. So this would have, oh, there we go. So it's not dipole-dipole, though. It's predominant would be hydrogen bonding because it has hydrogen bonded to N. All right, if I look at the next one, HF, okay? Hydrogen will bond to a fluorine. They each bond one time. All right, and then I look at this and I say, okay, well, this is linear, but this is polar because I have two different ends. So this is polar. I don't have hydrogen bonded to N. Well, actually, sorry, I do have hydrogen bonded to N or F, F in this case. So this is also hydrogen bonding. All right, and then my last one, CO2. All right, um, carbon bonds twice, oxygen bonds twice, and I have two oxygens. So what I'm going to end up with is this right here. Carbon's going to bond twice to each oxygen. So I'm going to have a linear molecule. It's going to be um, nonpolar because I've got it symmetrical balanced on either side. So this would be London dispersion. All right. One other example then, oops, sorry, is then rank the following in order of increasing boiling points. So we got to go lowest to highest. So we're going to need to figure out its intermolecular force and then relate that to boiling point. So again, I'm going to draw them. So CH4, carbon bonding to four hydrogens. All right, this would be tetrahedral. All the hydrogens are equally spaced. They are all the same, right? So this is nonpolar which means that we have London dispersion. Okay, let's do this for all these then. All right, CH3F. So C with three H's. And we're just replacing one from the previous one with a fluorine. Okay, so in this case, now this is polar. Even though they're all equally spaced, they're not all the same. So this is polar. So then I have to go back up. Okay, polar means it's either dipole, dipole, or hydrogen bonded to N, O, or F. So in this case, I have hydrogen and I have fluorine. However, they are not bonded to each other. So this is not hydrogen bonding. This is dipole, dipole. Okay. And then my last one, CH3OH. So again... I've got my CH3, and if you remember, we talked about when you have OH written together like that, that means they are bonded. All right, so in this case, I have a polar molecule, right? Say those, the oxygen and the three hydrogens are all equally spaced around the carbon. However, they're not all the same thing. And then do I have hydrogen bonding? Well, H bonded to O is right there right there. So I've got hydrogen bonding. So now let's rank them. Okay, increasing, so lowest to highest. So the weakest would have the lowest boiling point. That would be my London dispersion, so this would be one. My highest would be my hydrogen bonding, so this would be three. And then my, or my dipole dipole would be in the middle at two. So those are intermolecular forces. Um, we will do some examples and stuff in class and some more uh, practice.